Good morning. We welcome any visitors that we have this morning and ask that you fill out a visitor card, which is found in the pew rack, and place it in the collection plate as it passes later in the service. And we also hope that everyone will join us, that's everyone will join us, for the reception in the parlor over here in the back behind the sanctuary today. We especially welcome the Reverend Micah Royal, who is our guest minister today. Mr. Royal grew up in Fayetteville and earned his Master of Divinity at Campbell Divinity School. He has served as a pastor in a number of churches in the Carolinas and in Southern California. He currently serves as a chaplain at Transitions Hospice in Raleigh and lives in Carborough with his wife and their two dogs. Thank you for being here. His wife couldn't be with us today because of going to, a, not just going to, but taking part in Vacation Bible School today, I believe. Teachers, yeah. Teaching. Mm -hmm. Please remember that our new Pauls will be dedicated during worship two weeks from today and that donations to the Paul Fund need to be made by next Sunday. And the details are in the bulletin. And you will also find other announcements which may be of interest in the bulletin. At this time, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. If you are able, please stand for the call to worship. Come, hear again the promise of a holy love that knows us completely and holds us forever. Celebrate this holy love that draws us together to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Let us celebrate with our questions and doubts, our rejoicing and our faith, 
our longing and our hope. For the one who gives the promise calls us here to hear it again in as many ways as we can imagine. Come, God has called you. Please be seated. Let us pray. In humility and trust, we confess our shortcomings to you, O God. As stewards of your creation, we have not walked lightly on this earth or protected it. As a community filled with many gifts, we have not always seen those gifts in others or called them forth for the good of all. Create in us clean hearts, O oh God and put a new and right spirit within us. Sisters and brothers, let the past be past. The present is grace. The future is hope. This is God's way of forgiveness for you and for all creation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today's first lesson is found on page 278 in your pew Bible. That's page 278. The reading is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 14a. After 
after David the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to David, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David. This is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own, and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. The word of God for the people of God.
Our New Testament reading comes from Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 11. If you will either read along or listen as we hear the Scripture. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For Christ is our peace. In His flesh, He has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that He might create in Himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility, that hostility through it. So Christ came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through Him both of us have access in one Spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus Himself as the cornerstone. In Him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The Word of God for the people of God. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. So spoke then American President Ronald Reagan as he stood before the Berlin Wall, a barrier of concrete and metal and wire that didn't just divide Berlin between East and West, but divided the world between two groups locked in ideological battle in a Cold War that seemed to have no end. Now, the person who wrote those words was not, of course, the president. The great speeches are almost never written by presidents, but by a speechwriter of his. In writing about his choice to pin those words, tear down this wall, he tells of an encounter as he prepared for the speech where some of the leaders in the German government asked him not to mention the wall because they wanted people to get used to it. Speaking to some friends of his in then divided Berlin, he asked, is it true? Have you gotten used to this wall? His friends glanced at each other uneasily. Then one man raised an arm and pointed, my sister lives 20 miles in that direction, he said. I haven't seen her in more than two decades. Do you think I can get used to that? Another man spoke. Each morning on his way to work, he explained he walked past a guard tower. Each morning, a soldier gazed down at him through binoculars. That soldier and I speak the same language. We share the same history. But one of us is a zookeeper, and another is an animal, and I am never certain which is which. That call, tear down this wall, this wall of division, ended up being almost prophetic. I still remember sitting spellbound in a classroom with other kids my age as a teacher wheeled in a television set so that we could see 
A moment I didn't realize how important it was as hands upon hands took brick and brick and brick down, symbolizing the end of a Cold War that many of us never believed would be over. And I didn't fully understand what it meant then, but I do now. One new people emerged out of two. Our scripture readings suggest that those speechwriter's words, as brilliant as they were, were not prophetic simply because of his brilliance, but because they reflected the message of the original peacemaker, Jesus. Christ is the original one who came preaching to those who are far off and those who are near proclaiming the walls of division that keep us apart must certainly fall. In every way we build up divisions to keep those kinds of people out, Christ appears in our midst saying, tear down that wall. And you know, we live in a world far too divided by walls of fear and misunderstanding. Just last month, our nation was rocked by witnessing this. The outcome of building walls when a young white man full of fear and hatred walked into a historically black church in Charleston. I don't know about you, but I couldn't get rid of the footage on my TV set. But before that, we saw that footage in a different way again and again. In the faces of young people of color, killed, harassed, from Ferguson to Missouri to within a walking distance of a house I used to have near Bladen County. But we don't just see these walls being raised about skin color, do we? Just a little after the new year in the town I live in, in near Chapel Hill, we were all shaken by the death of three young people who had devoted themselves to serving the least of these in our community. These three were killed in cold blood by someone who feared their Muslim faith. Even though it is what inspired them to lives of service. The bullets he shot were his way of erecting a wall to say, we don't want you here. And even recently when our Supreme Court said we are carrying down some walls that keep out LGBT people, I can't speak for you, but I very quickly heard people trying to raise walls again with rhetoric of exclusion and fear. Even our own families can have painful walls be raised. I was talking uh, before the service to a couple of you about my work as a hospice chaplain. One of the things that breaks my heart is when I'm sitting with families and a loved one is about to pass and they are scrambling because they have cut each other out of each other's lives over things they no longer remember. And they want to set things right before that person they need it set right with passes. It's a blessing many times to help them do that. And as a chaplain, I get to. But far too often, the scramble is too late. And on this side of the veil, that healing can't happen. These walls even emerge in our families. And even though it may look to us as if this division and hatred and violence are the final word, God says to us today, no. For Christ is standing in our midst saying, tear down these walls. Ephesians tells us not only that Christ brings peace, but He already is our peace. Because He has already begun to knock down every wall that keeps us apart. And He invites us to join in the work of the cross of tearing down the walls. How do we do this in our lives? Well, the starting place in answering the cry, tearing down these walls, is to realize that God already has torn down every wall that stands between you and God. And I can't speak to your experience, but too often in the church, I've come to meet people who have walked
walked in after having heard for years that someone like them, perhaps someone like you, has no place in God's family. Feeling as if, like the Ephesians did, all they are is a stranger and an outsider exiled from God's love. A man named Troy also felt like this, like an exile cut off from Christ. He had been disowned by his family for who he was. He had been kicked out of the church. And he felt helpless and hopeless as if God had given up on him. Full of despair, he did what many with despair do. And then sitting in his bathtub, took razors to his skin. And as his blood started to cool, he went, everything went black. When he woke, miracle of miracles, he was alive and in a hospital bed beyond all hope. And when he began to open his eyes, he heard these words echoing in his heart. I made you. I love you. I've never rejected you. Show others the same. This experience saved his life and his faith. But it did more. It launched him into a life of service. Knowing God loved him despite all who said otherwise, Troy Perry became Real Reverend Troy Perry, one of the first openly gay ministers in the United States. In a day and age when you could be thrown in jail for being openly gay. And he began a ministry of welcome and acceptance that we see continuing, not just in the churches he started, in California, but in our open and affirming movement in the United Church of Christ, which not only helped LGBT people find faith, but also helped the Supreme Court ruling happen, the civil rights work that was done out of that. What a difference Troy, knowing Christ, said, tear down this wall made for him, made for us. What Troy learned in that experience is not just true of him, but of each and every one of you in this room and those outside these walls. God is saying to each of you, I made you. I love you. I've never rejected you. Show others the same. The first part is believing it. But the next part is that last phrase, showing others the same. That is part and parcel of how we express this grace we found. We must learn to live as ones who say yes to Christ's call, tear down this wall. After the Charleston shooting, a friend from one of our historically black United Church of Christ churches put it to me well. You know, she said, folks are scared. After Charleston, when we see some young white men walk into the church, people are going to be on a word. Instead of wanting to open their arms in love, people's first thought would be, what is he doing here? Is he up to no good? Are we safe? And what's sad, she said, is that is not what we need right now. That's what people like that shooter wanted. We need to all stand together. And I think her words could be said about what happened in uh, Tennessee this week as well, changing some details. She hit the nail on the head of what tearing down that wall is about, didn't she? It is so easy to huddle in fear with those who look like us and seem like us. White folks with white folks, people of color with people of color, straight folks with straight folks, gay folks with gay folks, I could go down the list. Instead, we need to reach out across the aisle in love. The late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King put it well. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Learning to practice this is not easy, but it is the way to God's future for us. How do we tear down this wall? Tearing down this wall might mean in our communities. Me and Chapel Hill, you here in Burlington or wherever you're from. Examining what our community does with education and policing and other practices. How is racial bias coloring what we're doing? 
What can we do to change that? As churches, tearing down this wall might be beginning to own up to how we've contributed to the problem. You know, Dr. King said, oh so many decades ago, Sunday morning is the most segregated hour of the week. And friends, it hasn't changed a whole lot. So we have to ask ourselves, what have we done to continue these divisions? And what can we do now to widen our welcome as a church, but also to reach across to the body and partner with others who are different than us? Tearing down that wall might mean personally looking into ways you might change your life and me. It might mean reaching out to build relationships with people you've avoided because they seem so different. Hearing their stories, getting to know what their life looks like. Tearing down that wall might mean, too, uh, and uh, one of you here has heard my story on this, so you know this strikes real personal to me, simply being willing to not give up on that person in your life, and you know who that may be, you are so tempted to toss in the towel. It might involve being willing to reach out one more time to seek amends or to seek to extend grace. Saying, I'm sorry, and not giving up even though you need to hear it from them and they're not willing to say it. At the heart of the outlook we need is the perspective Desmond Tutu described in his book, No Future Without Forgiveness. This is the attitude a reconciling lifestyle has. He says, my humanity is caught up, is inextricably bound up in yours. We belong in a bundle of life. A person is a person through other persons. It is not, I think, therefore I am. But rather I am because I belong, I participate, I share. May we learn to extend this mercy, this grace, this belonging to all people. May we learn to live out the lives of reconciliation Christ calls us to today and all our days. Amen.
begin with our joys and concerns. I want to pause for just a moment of silent reflection. We had a tragedy this week in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I feel like unless we took a moment to honor the lives that were lost and hurt, we would not do, do service um, to the love our God calls us to. So let's take a moment of silent reflection, and I want to say a prayer of blessing on those families before we go into our time of joys and concerns. Lord, in the midst of our broken world, we remember those broken right now in Chattanooga and around the world. I take a moment and remember Carson Holmquist, David Wyatt, Skip Wells, Thomas Sullivan, and every other life touched and hurt. We pray especially for the Chattanooga community, for your healing and peace, and for this nation and world. Amen. As we come to our time of joys and concerns, does anyone... uh, Well, let me read the prayer request we have and then see if there are any other praises or requests for prayer. We have a prayer request for Mary Jane Pettigrew, who's not feeling well, for Ben Wilson, recovering from surgery, uh, asking us to remember the Nicomb Chandler, uh, I believe it's Terrell or Farrell family, at the passing of Wanda Nicomb Friday night, and for Dan Loy, who is recovering from back surgery. Do we have any other words of thanks and praise to God anyone wants to share or requests for prayer and blessing? Yes, I would like to pray for my back surgery. Who's undergoing surgery this week? Mike Baxter. Okay, thank you. Any other requests for prayer or thanks? I try not to ask for myself. I try not to ask for myself. Um, Usually you've heard me ask for my children, Um, but... Um, I have degenerative disc disease in my back and I've been having a lot of issues recently and I'm not sure if anything happened, but I'm going to have to see the doctor this week. And I just wanted y'all to keep me in my prayers. But on a good note, I did get a B in a very hard course this summer, so I'm happy on that one. <laughs> Thank you. What, what, and since I'm, visiting, what's your, since I'm visiting, what's your name? Adrian. Adrian. Thank you, Adrian. Any other words of praise or prayer? Happy birthday! Any other words of praise or, or prayer? Well, let us go to God in prayer. God of the aliens and the strangers, Make our doors wide enough that all can find a welcome, a home, a haven in our hearts. Christ of the near and of those who are far, make our hearts wide enough so that all might find a place in this household of faith and in our community. Welcoming spirit of saints and sinners, because aren't we all both? Open our arms wide enough so that all the guest and the neighbor, the child and the widow, the politician and the homeless, the brother, the sister, may be embraced by your love and grace, and that we might be your welcoming presence to others. Try in God of love, we thank you for these gifts of your grace that were mentioned, a be in class, Nancy Simmons' birthday, and all of our jobs and families, and gifts and blessings we experience every day and overlook. God who tears down every wall, we also pray that you would tear open the heavens to send down your blessing on Mary Jane Pettigrew, on Ben Wilson, on the Nicomb Chandler family, on Dan Loy, on um, Mike Baxter, and on Adrian and her family. God in community, holy in unity, open your arms wide enough to enfold us in your heart as we pray as our Lord has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom.
kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom of the Lord. this time I I invite you to give of your open heart to God, not just gifts of treasure, but also of your talent and time that you commit to give as you give your whole life to God's service as people of healing and reconciliation. This is from you, our God, who is reconciling the world to yourself in Christ and through whom you have given us a mission of reconciliation. May we devote devote these gifts, and not just these gifts, but our whole lives, to this high calling, so that through us and through your Spirit, we can tear down every wall that divides us from you and each other. Amen.
stranger and dear friend equally. So sharing God's steadfast love and living in faithfulness. Now go, sharing Christ's compassion with all, tearing down, dividing walls, building bridges to hope. Now go.